Welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm going to do a little unbagging for you. This is something that I've been waiting on from Maria <coughs> at Expeditionary Art. I wasn't going to do a video right away, but I've been staining doors um, on my house, and I really wanted to paint, and I just don't have time to do it. My nails look like hell, and I've got stain on my hands. My hands are sticky. But um, this is the art toolkit that I've been showing everybody. If you have not watched my previous videos, I can link them below. But I got this art toolkit from Maria at Expeditionary Art. It travels all over, all over the world and sketches. And sometimes she's in very remote areas where she has to crawl on her belly or whatever, and she can't be carrying a backpack full of supplies. So... She has this little bag that she takes with her, um, and she only takes the necessities. Now, I have more than what she gives you in this kit. I'm going to take out the stuff that is mine and show you what I got in the kit. Um, I'll just leave this pencil in. But this is pretty much what comes in the kit. You get a Moleskine um, book. A five by eight sketchbook. Um, the paper is a little bit thinner. It's not my favorite sketching book, but it works just fine. As long as you're not doing heavy washes, you'll be okay. Be great for gouache too, but it's great for pen because there's no tooth to the paper, really. But anyway, you get that. You can, I believe you can buy just the empty, the empty um, canvas bag too. And then you get your water bottle which is a little mini water bottle you get a syringe to refill a water brush you get your water brush you get a ruler um, one of those clear plastic rulers you get a pencil and um, you get a sharpie marker I'm just gonna put this one in there and then you get two little clips for your book and then if you want to you can add on a watercolor palette now this one somebody was asking me about in my last video and I'm gonna tell you right now she wanted to know where I got it from she wanted to use wanted a double-sided palette now if you get a double-sided palette I'll just let you know that you have to be careful where you place your colors because you'll find when you're wanting to mix something like if I want to add blue to my green and I've laid my green down first then I'm going to flip it to get my blue, and then I lose the green. It runs down the down the side. So you've just got to be careful with that. It's not great for that instance, but for the most part, I usually mix on my book. So it's not a huge issue for me. I do like having the double-sided palette with the full-size pans because I can put a lot of colors in. Some of these colors are monotonous, and I need to take them out and change them over to other colors. I just haven't done that yet. I did buy new um, palettes on Etsy from someone. But this I got at discount from Wellspring Gifts. Dot, no, Wellspring Gift, singular, dot com. I'll try to remember to post that below. And I forget the woman's name, but I did a review video on this when I first got it. It was before I had used it for a while. So, um, but it is a nice palette. But Maria from Art Toolkit, she, or Expeditionary Art, she um, uses a single business size palette for her watercolors. Now, what she sent me today, this I did not purchase. She sent it to me for review. Um, really interesting. Very cute. I think it costs $26 is what it says on there. But, um, oh, she sent me a card too. Let me just see what this card says real quick before I open this up. Oh, boy, that's some sticky paper. Oh, I'll bet she drew this. Yep, Maria Corral Martin, Liberty Bell, Washington Pass. It's a 15 by 15 watercolor, and that's her work. She does beautiful work, as you can see. Uh, so she sent me a card. I hope she doesn't mind me reading it. 
Uh, hi, Sharon. I hope you enjoy the Demi palette. I'm so excited about it and would love to hear any of your experiences. I'm off next week to paint in Alaska. Wish me luck. All the best, Maria. Wow. She's, well, she's an expeditionary artist. Must what, Some life, you know. Must be nice. Um, she sent me this little pocket palette. And it is small. Look at how small this is. Here's business size, business card size, although they're thinner than this because mine's a double. And this is the pocket size palette. Very, very small. Let me measure it for you so you get an idea. It is about two and a quarter inches by just under one and three quarter inches. And it's about one quarter inch thick. And it comes with 12 little palettes. Now, I usually use the big ones. And I'm, I, I tell you, I am not usually a half, a, a half pan type person because to me, I damage brushes very easily. But with a water brush, I really don't care. They're cheap. I can buy more of them very, very easily. But when I go to my paints, I usually draw down like this so that I don't ruin a brush. When I'm in a little thing like this, it is really hard not to knock against the edges of the palette. And then you're, you're using the point of your brush and you're going in this way. So I'm going to use it. And I'm going to give you an honest review of what I think of this palette. I think this palette would be very usable for things like, uh, let's say, you're out and about and you just toss like maybe a 3 by 5 book in your purse. Um, you could even use a regular size palette. But if you want to use something smaller, that, and a water brush, and you're set to go, that's all you need. You can carry a pencil or pen if you'd like. But... Um, yeah, this is just a little 3 by 5 book that I was sketching in. Um, I haven't used it in a while, so uh, i got to get back to it. But um, I'm going to go ahead and try this palette. I'll probably put it in my art tool kit and use this instead of this for a while to see how I do. Um, but I really recommend this kit. Out of all the things that I've reviewed... This kit is probably the most used item that I have. Now, when I'm going out, and I think I might be standing or in a weird position, I love having my other bag that flips open and becomes a table that I reviewed last, oh, I don't know, last fall, I think I reviewed that. And I forget the name of it all the time. It's driving me crazy. But it, um, And it's not on the bag, so I can't tell you. I lost my ruler somewhere. Isn't that strange? Oh, here it is. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put my colors in this, get it all set up, and we'll see how I like it. And the little mixing areas on this side, it's white. It looks like there's a, um, it's like a, a something over it that makes it white. So we'll see. And it says arttoolkit.com on the bottom. It'd be nice if it said that on the top. Wish Maria luck in Alaska. Again, her artwork is just absolutely gorgeous. And I might just fill this up right now and do, do a little painting myself. I brought my watercolor boxes out. I use tea boxes. I have two of them that I split my watercolors in half because I have so many watercolors. So I'm going to go through them, and I'm going to decide what colors I want. I even thought about making it a gouache palette, but that's just too small. Um, especially if they get dry, it'll be hard, too hard to reconstitute them in a, in a little thing like that. So I'm not going to do that. But I am going to go ahead and use watercolor, so I'm going to pick out my colors now, and I will speed this up. Thank you. 
Okay, this is my palette that I've chosen. It took me a little bit to figure out what I want to do. I kind of wanted to challenge myself to use a couple different colors that I normally wouldn't use. Although one thing I could not give up was my Daniel Smith sap green. I tried three sap greens here. And out of the three, this is the most natural looking color. And that is the Daniel Smith color. These other two are, two are just a bright green that, I don't know, I guess they could work in a sketchbook. But I couldn't resist and went with my sap green. And I probably should have gone with one of these other ones like PWC, Shinhan, or my um, Van Gogh or something like that. But I just couldn't do it. So I should have. But... For my reds, I chose a warm and a cool. I chose quinacridone magenta instead of alizarin crimson or permanent alizarin crimson because it is more of a pink color and I can get more pinks out of this. Then I went with permanent red, which is definitely a bright red color. I'm just going to show you these colors uh, real quick with my water brush, although I got brown all over it. Holy moly, just a second here. Um, so here is the um, Quinacridone Magenta. You can see how I can thin it out to a pink color, which is really nice. I, that's, that's just a wonderful color. That one is by Daniel Smith. I've mixed them up a little bit. Uh, this permanent red is by Shinhan. It's their permanent water or professional watercolor series the pwc this is one of my favorite permanent reds i mean it's it's just like crayola red you know <laughs> and it's a nice warm red so i chose that for my warm then i chose a cool and a warm yellow this one is a lemon yellow by shinhan Professional Watercolors, or PWC. Um, they changed their packaging, so sometimes you see them like this, and then sometimes you see this is the newer way they're packaging them. I like the old packaging better, to be honest, but um, that's a lemon yellow, or, yeah, it's called lemon yellow. Then this is Permanent Yellow Deep, which is... To me, like a um, gamboge type of a color. So that's my warm yellow. Then for my blues, I kind of stuck with the same family. Um, just my two favorite blues that I use all the time. Of course, this is ultramarine blue. Um, and this one is by um, PWC. I got too much on there because it's wet. The palette, I mean. And then the next one I picked is my favorite deep blue, which is, as most of you know, my Indanthrone blue. I like it better than Indigo, but Indigo would be my second choice. It's just a bluer blue rather than Indigo, which is, is really... It's got more black to it. I'll just show you real quick here what indigo looks like. It's got black mixed in. Now I could take other colors and make it dark like that, so that's fine with me. For my greens, then, like I said, I chose um, Sap Green by Daniel Smith, which I find is a more natural green. And I chose Perylene Green. I was going back and forth between Perylene and jadeite. Perylene is just a little bit deeper. I should take it off of my dry palette. It's easier for me to work with. Let's... This is perylene green. And I'll show you jadeite, which I was struggling as to which one to choose. It's just a little bit greener. They're very similar, so I could have gone either way. Then I chose my um, buff titanium. This is um, the only company so far that makes this color is Daniel Smith. I don't know if others have jumped on the bandwagon yet. Some try with their other colors, but they're too, a little too yellow. 
Then I have uh, yellow ochre. Um, I'm just taking it off of my palette instead, my regular palette. And then after that, I chose. I was I was going back and forth. I was gonna cho choose a burnt sienna, but I always have burnt sienna in my palette, and that's fine. But I chose a gray also, so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go some somewhere different with this. So I decided to go with Piemonite Genuine by Daniel Smith. It's kind of a purpley brown to me. Very pretty. And then my, last but not least, I chose Joseph Z's Cool Gray by Daniel Smith, which is an awesome gray. It's uh, Payne's gray can be a little blue. This one tends to be a little purple. It's just very pretty. So those are the 12 colors I chose for my palette right there. I was thinking of choosing some sort of a purple like my um, ultramarine violet or my uh, amethyst, but I can mix those very easily by mixing my Quinacridone Magenta and my Indanthrone Blue, I can get this deep purple. Or if I want to warm it up a bit, I can um, go with my Ultramarine and make it look like Ultramarine Violet. So I don't need to have that in my palette. It's just a convenience color. And there's so many things you can mix with these colors. Now my Piemonite Genuine, you can see, is drying. It's a little bit different than, uh, or it's a lot different than Burnt Sienna. This is my, was my other choice. And then to choose their burnt, the other company, Burnt Sienna's, this was more red ochre-like to me, a little on the oranger side. But this one was, um, I forget which one this one. That one was brown by PWC, and the one on the right was Art Creation by Talons, just a student color that I got with something, probably a doodle and sketch box, and that was this color. They look a lot alike. The one in the middle was Burnt Sienna by Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith's colors are very different, and their granulating properties are just so beautiful. That's why Daniel Smith is my favorite company, but if I were going to pick a second company that I like the colors on, I would probably say the Shinhan Professional Watercolors is the route I would go. But um, anyway, these are the ones I chose for now. And I will let you know how I what I think of this after it dries in the palette a little bit and sinks down and I can go ahead and use it. But it is very itty bitty. So we'll see. I think it'll be fine with a water brush, but I wouldn't want to use my regular brushes with this because I just get worried about the tips. We'll see. I'm not really sure. So um, that's that's it for today. And if you're interested in the art toolkit, I will link it below. You can get it at our Etsy shop, but I recommend you getting it at um, at her website because then she's not paying the Etsy commission. And um, I think that would be better for her. So go ahead and order that. And like I said, I use this every day that I'm painting. This is what I'm pulling out. Now, granted, I don't have an art studio right now. So using this has been such a great help for me <clears throat> to have. I also have my travel brushes in here right now, along with an extra an extra pen refill for my Kuwaiko Sport. But, um, I, oh, and one other thing. You guys wanted to see me paint with my, or draw with my, or write with my watercolor, or my glass pen using watercolor. So I'm going to do that real quick. I will show you how I do it. Uh, for those of you who are asking, um, <clears throat> What I do is I make a puddle of paint on my um, palette. I'll just use my scarlet here. And I make a nice puddle. 
just like I would with a painting, you know. And then once I have that, then I just take my watercolor brush and I roll it in this, just like that. And you can see it's picked up a lot of paint. And then you can go ahead and write. Usually I have to tap off the first drop, but it looks like I didn't pick up enough here. Let's see. Very simple to write with. And you can do branches on trees if you want. If you've got something that's small and has a lot of branches and you don't want to use pen, you want to stick to true to watercolor, you can use one of these. And um, it'd be good for grasses as well. You can do it real thin and make grasses. And that's pretty much it. So it's very simple to use. And like I said, all I do is I roll it. So if I want to pick up more color, I just go ahead and roll it. If it's real wet, though, you'll see a bead dropping down on your on your pen. Make sure you just tap it off on the corner before you or on another piece of paper before you start writing. But um, yeah, I think this is a cool pen, and I I do use it if I want to make it look like um, calligraphy you can thicken up your downstrokes it's getting dry I didn't put much water out because I used a water brush and uh, it's getting empty so Sorry, I bumped my camera. It's right here by my head. There you go. Very simple. So that's how you use the glass pen with watercolor. Then just dip it in your water to rinse it off, which I don't have any of here. So <laughs> anyway, everybody have a great, re great day. And remember, be courageous. Paint with wild abandon. And most of all, be kind to each other. Take care, everybody. I'll be getting the building vlog up very soon. Bye-bye.